Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Welcome back, everybody. We are live here in San Jose at Big Data SV. This is theCUBE's uh, premier big data event. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, we're joined in this segment by Jim Walker, who is Senior Director of Product Marketing at Hortonworks, and Rob Rosen, Senior Director of Product Solutions at Platfora. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Jim, long time, frequent guest. Uh, Rob, I think your first time joining us on theCUBE, so great to have you guys here. Thank you. Um, so we've got you both here. So I guess, you know, want to start the question, talk a little bit about the relationship. I mean, we know that Hortonworks is very important uh, to build out the partner ecosystem. It's a really integral part of your business model. Uh, talk a little bit about, Jim, why don't we start with you, sure. kind of uh, where Platform plays and, and kind of set the stage for us, kind of where the relationship is. Yeah, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, a fundamental belief at Hortonworks has always been to enable the ecosystem. I think from, uh, you know, day one when I walked through the front door, uh, I sat down with Rob Beard and he said, you know, look at, you know, our, stra our, our strategy is really a triangle and, and one of those pieces of the triangle has been really a partner strategy and an ecosystem strategy. And, uh, you know, partnership with Platform has been going on for, oh gosh, quite some time, really since the inception of, of Platform. And so, you know, really early on, um, you know, we saw that, you know, this visualization and the analytic layer that, that needed to live on top of Hadoop was definitely uh, a necessity in, in our customer base. So. You know, gosh, we've been working together for about, like I said, about two years, and uh, you know, the, the the partnership has had, uh, you know, I think Hadoop had to to make its, it had to be established as as a platform. You know, people had to dump a lot of data into it. I think initially people were using uh, Platform as a way to kind of play with things. That's completely changed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're at the stage now where people are looking at uh, tools like Platform and them in particular to say, hey, let's really extract some real value out of this Hadoop thing. You know, let's you know start with this EDW optimization, whatever we're doing, but. Um, real critical to to a, a lot of our customers mm -hmm. today. Yeah. So Rob, tell us a little bit about your approach uh, at Platfora. You know, Jim kind of alluded to the first phase of big data was a lot about getting data into the data lake, if you will. Right. And now we're moving to where we're seeing, well, how do we get some a lot of value out of all that data yeah. in there? And that's where I think Platfora plays. Tell us a little bit about your approach to helping customers actually uh, get some value out of that data through the analytics and visualizations. So when we founded Platfora four years ago, we heard very frequent comments around, hey, we feel like we're data rich but insight poor. And when we looked at how most of the traditional business intelligence vendors were approaching the market, the conclusion was that kind of bolting on Hadoop to a traditional BI pipeline was going to make that problem way worse. So we decided that we really need to enable end users, business analysts who want to be able to get into all the data with Hadoop, find patterns very quickly. We need to enable those folks to uh, iterate to insight very quickly by doing a lot of the work that IT would traditionally do uh, around data prep, around an analytics enablement, and kind of get them out of the world where adding a new column of data takes nine months <laughs> and allow end users to do that themselves in like nine minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really been our focus over the last four years. We've seen some amazing use cases that were enabled by HTP um, to help people kind of move from that sort of initial probing around what do we do with this stuff to some really critical business insights that they can find very quickly with Platform and HTTP together. So dig into that a little bit more. So what are some of, as that evolution has occurred, what are some of the, when I say common patterns or common yeah. use cases yeah. you're seeing among your customers? So we see um, about 70% of our customers doing work around customer analytics, you know, the traditional mm -hmm. customer 360 sort of sets of use cases, um, where they're combining the, the traditional data sources around highly structured data, which they're scooping into HTTP, and then they're combining that with maybe sensor data or uh, lots <laughs> of less traditional data sources, clickstream data, mm -hmm. and they're getting a full picture around how a given customer might be interacting with a brand on their wireless device versus on a website versus in a store, right? And once you get that complete picture, you can really get to the bottom of what people are really perceiving about your brand and where they're getting hung up when they're trying to transact. Mm -hmm. so that's been a real common area for now, us. Now, are you seeing that develop kind of side by side with some of the more traditional ways they've been doing things? Or are mm -hmm. you seeing more of a uh, rip and replace kind of strategy? Or are you seeing that this is more complementary to what It's, it's really complementary, right? So you might take some of the same data sources that a traditional customer analytics solution like Omniture would use. Mm -hmm. Um, and enrich that with other data sets that maybe people wouldn't have the ability to do easily with a traditional analytic solution. And the same sort of paradigm holds true for some of our other customer solution sets like uh, security and Internet of Things, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of very traditional analytics approaches uh, that people are using and they're complementing uh, a platform play with HTTP and Platform together to sort of flesh out the overall big picture. 
And over time, we probably anticipate seeing some of those traditional workflows migrate over to a Hadoop and a platform kind of a play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you mentioned security. Obviously, that's a hot topic. It's mm -hmm. you, pretty much every other day, you know, on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, there's some kind of data breach. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, from a security perspective, both, you know, from both you guys. So, from, mm -hmm. so Jim, let's start with you from Hortonworks' perspective. Yep. Um, what are you guys doing in the security space? You know, I, I know you launched the uh, Data Governance Initiative uh, a little yeah. while back, which is you know related to security. How do you approach security in a, in a big data context? Yeah. So, so there's really two sides of this question, really, Jeff. I mean, there's there's security of the platform itself, and you know we're entrenched in that. You know, we incubate projects. You know, we we actually purchased the company last year, um, and then incubated that as an Apache Software Foundation project. It's called Apache Ranger. Um, so, you know, we're in the business of really securing the platform, right? And so that's, I'm not going to talk too much about that. I think what it becomes interesting from an insights point of view and what the tools you can do to actually implement security for an organization is really, really interesting to me. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, don't get me wrong, I love the bits, I love the Apache projects and all these things, but I think from a pure consumer point of view, what can people use Hadoop for to implement better security in their organizations? Mm -hmm. A whole lot. Um, you know, I was in the computer security business for, I mean, I was, I was coding ACL frameworks in Smalltalk and Java in the late 90s. And, uh, you know, and then I moved into master data management, so it was single view of the customer stuff. And when I found Hadoop, oh gosh, uh, six years ago or so, I just, I looked back on my career and said, wow, there's a lot better way of doing all these things. Um, the single view, the 360 degree view, as you just said, yeah. um, we start to look at the amount of data that it takes to actually uh, do forensics on, say, a, a, a breach. When we look at the amount of data that it takes to actually understand, you know, uh, how holes happen, or or look at the perishable insights, or you know, the moments in time that uh, that that our security breaches, be it you know, uh, a fraud at a at a credit card, uh, you know, transaction, right? Um, you know, being able to do that at mass scale mm -hmm. has always been a challenge because systems in the back end, uh, it's just too difficult to scale. You can't uh, a you can't throw enough hardware at it, or you couldn't you know, couldn't throw the software at it to actually deal with this. Um, but then, as the problem kind of progressed, it, it, it just had its own problems, right? And so, I think what's happening with Hadoop is people are starting to look at the way that they've done things in the past and said, let's do them better. And so, when I look at things like Platform about simplifying that front end and doing being able to investigate data or interrogate it, I guess, from the mm -hmm. security side, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's really interesting to me. And so, I, like I said, I think there's two sides. I, I, we could talk at long about security inside, Jeff, but I think that's kind of the security side. Is that yeah. what you guys are seeing too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the kind of canonical problem for a security analyst is that 95% of your network traffic is normal and appropriate. 5% okay. is really dangerous it's really hard to find that 5%, mm -hmm. right? So what <laughs> we enable with Hadoop underneath us is uh, to extend the timeline past the sort of traditional 30-day boundary that you see with most security appliances, right? So most of those security appliances that are deployed on an enterprise network have MySQL or Oracle as mm -hmm. a backing store, and that takes you out to about 30 days. After that, you're kind of on your own, right? So uh, to really kind of get the big picture on where that dangerous 5% might be, you need to take uh, data from all those different devices, ingest it into Hadoop, and now you have sort of a multi-structured data set and a much bigger picture that goes back much further in yep. time. So it's much easier to figure out what a traditional pattern is and whether or not it's, quote, normal, because that's the same pattern that's been happening over the last you know, six months, or it's abnormal, and all of a sudden you've got an endpoint on your network that's sending sensitive data out to China that's never done that before, mm -hmm. okay? That's an area that you know you need to pay immediate attention to, and that's really what HTTP enables for us, is the ability to get a much longer period of time because you have very cost-effective storage platform. Right, and, and the ability, so now you're not, you don't have to sample, you don't have to uh, right. uh, just interrogate a very small set of data where you can, you can miss those anomalies, which exactly. in security is exactly what you're looking for. Exactly, yeah, we all know that hackers have been very, very sophisticated around their uh, ability to get in underneath the wires and stay effectively dormant for six months and very slowly pick up very sensitive data. So if you've got the big picture and you can get down to the individual record level, you can actually detect those things much more easily than if you're trying to sample the data or you're working off of just aggregate data. If you want to find a needle in a haystack, you have to have a haystack. That's right. It's Great really enough. as simple as that. Yes. I mean, that, it really, yeah. that's it. You have to right. have the haystack, and we simply have not been able to capture the haystack. I mean, this stuff just ends up on the data center floor for years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of that is gone, you know. Just understanding IP traffic in itself is, is great. You know, taking, ingesting data from every laptop on the, in the organization, it's corporate data. Um, you simply weren't able to do that before, right. and, and now we can do that, that's which right. is really, it's awesome. So let's turn kind of back to enterprise adoption. So, you know, one of the challenges we hear from practitioners all the time with Hadoop, you know, it can be complex. You still got to put a lot of different pieces together. We're starting to see that solidify. Things mm -hmm. like uh, the announcement yesterday around the open data platform, sure. 
uh, really the goal there to solidify the core to make it more consumable to the enterprise. Um, you know, in the case of partnerships, um, bringing together more of a, if not a one-stop shop, one-stop sure. solution, um, a much more cohesive uh, product, essentially, that an organization can bring into their, into their data center. Um, Rob, from Platforma's perspective, how do you look at this market? How do you look at this technology? Um, does it require a platform play? Um, or can you know this this idea of cobbling together best of breed solutions is that is that sustainable? So it really depends on you know the physical geography, literally where you're at. Um, we see adoption of best of breed approaches accelerating much more quickly on the coasts, in the United States, and mm -hmm. in certain territories in EMEA, uh, in Japan, as an example. Other areas, if you look towards the sort of later adopters geographically, they can really get a lot more leverage out of a pre-integrated platform, right? So they're able to not have to spend as much time in the weeds trying to figure out how everything works, and that's a big issue for them because they can't find the talent typically in those areas. So there's definitely um, a huge potential for having kind of a common platform that's pre-integrated. Mm -hmm. And so I completely agree with you. What we're seeing is certainly on the, the, you know, the Global 1000, the really big enterprises are taking steps mm -hmm. with Hadoop. You've got the kind of born data-driven startups that are mm -hmm. kind of built in their DNA. Uh, but it's that that fat middle around mm -hmm. uh, all the other enterprises out there that are, you know, they're starting to think about it, but they're, uh, you know, we saw this in the data warehouse space, for example, around consolidation, around the appliance model, kind of making it easier to consume. So, Jim, talk a little bit about that approach. Do you see, do you see that playing out in this market? And, and how did, does ODP, is that part of that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, you know, ODP in itself and the way that this kind of market is now progressing, we, we've reached a really interesting point in time with Hadoop. I mean, you know, for years it was, the question was, you know, do I roll my own or do I use a distribution? Right. You right. know, and God forbid you rolled your own, right? Because think about, you know, Hadoop distribution comprises, uh, depending on who it is, 11, 13 different projects, yeah. maybe 15 sometimes, yeah. you know, whatever that is. That's really complicated. That's not easy to pull together and actually, I mean, that's, that's why there's distribution companies. It's, right. If it was really easy to create a distribution, there'd be a lot more than a few of us out there kind of doing the distribution game, right? And so that's not a simple task to, to take on. And so if you, if you take that a step back and say, okay, great, that you know, we've solved that, we have distribution companies, it's kind of a, its own standard that people can now build on top of. I, I think this market, and you and I spoke about this a little bit earlier, it's, you know, we, we've moved from kind of the build to the scale phase for Hadoop. I mean, you, you know, we see people out there saying things like, you know, Hadoop is no longer kind of an option. It's, it's kind of a, it's, it's, it's a key piece of the overall data architecture. And so as that happens, in order for this, for everybody to kind of scale and move forward, there does need to be some sort of kind of a core, if you will, that you know, people like Platform can build on top of. So they don't have to build you know, five different versions of their platform that's going to interact with five right. different distributions or whatever that's going to be. And so really this is an effort to kind of push forward in that direction to help you know, our ecosystem of, of partners kind of move forward in a much more simpler way. And so that's the way I look at it. It's not about slowing, I mean, innovation is still gonna happen. I, are you crazy? I, the, 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 the innovation that's happening in and around Hadoop and the various different projects, astonishing, awesome, right? That, that production of code, the, uh, the upstream production of code, is, is, that's not gonna slow down. In fact, that's accelerating, I'll say, because uh, more organizations are becoming involved within you know, the general Hadoop community, and that's one of the roles that we help play within this whole, with this whole game. It's about consumption. And how do I ease consumption of Hadoop within the, the ecosystem of applications that are going to live in and on top of Hadoop? I mean, the, the other conversation I had earlier with, with you, Rob, was go walk around the show floor. I'm going to tell you there's a lot less focus on the distributions mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of focus on you know, the platforms of the world and, and the applications that are sitting on top of Hadoop. That's just where we're at. That's just kind of where we're at in this marketplace. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see it. You know, as being in this game for quite some time, you've been in this for quite some time, Jeff. It's a real exciting, you know, this is an exciting time for, I think, the overall Hadoop market. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I agree. I think we're, we're, like I said, I think we're moving from, you know, big data, 1.0, whatever you want to call it, where it was, you know, I think a lot of the use cases were focused on some of those cost savings from mm -hmm. an IT perspective. I'm going to save some money on my... Uh, mm -hmm. data warehouse because I'm going to move some of that data over to Hadoop and I'm going to maybe just store it there long-term archiving, but I'm not doing much else with it, to, okay, how am I going to actually drive revenue? How am I going to actually, maybe cost savings, but in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bigger picture way, you know, think about some of the things that you see GE doing with predictive maintenance on mm -hmm. industrial equipment, that kind of thing. So I think it's, I agree with you. I think it's a pretty exciting time. We're starting to, to make that move from kind of 1.0 to 2.0. It's a little bit of an overused phrase, but I think that's ah, kind of where we are. I, I, two, Hadoop 2.0 was really the beginning of this change, right? And mm -hmm. so, you know, turning on Yarn, uh, turning on Hadoop to be kind of this multi-tenant 
platform, you know, shared security, governance, and operations, multiple different applications, really turned on a lot more things than just, say, right. one serial application living right. on Hadoop. And I think it actually makes it even more important for you guys because now we have lots of different types of data. How do I do discovery across not exactly. just one set of data a customer, but oh my gosh, you are feeding in you know, 15 different sets of data here. Mm -hmm. you know, how do I make sense of that as a business person? And that's where I think you know, right. these type of tools become extremely important. That was the beginning of the shift is, is mm -hmm. all I kind of wanted to add, but I think it's really, really imperative to understand too. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, now, the interesting thing about this market is you're seeing the, you know, the industry heavyweights are getting involved, a little bit more, more in depth. So whether it's IBM's of the world or EMC slash Pivotal, et cetera, and they're moving up the stack, they're doing some of the analytic work, the database work. So my question for you, Rob, mm -hmm. from, from Plat Forest's perspective, what is, what is it like out there as a you know, startup here? Mm -hmm. You're innovating, you're trying to disrupt this market, mm -hmm. but now you're competing against and you're, I'm, you know, you're hearing there's a lot of noise coming from some of the big players. Mm -hmm. How do you approach that? How do you fight through that noise and gain mind share yeah. and market share? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. You see uh, a lot of the taglines literally being identically copied from vendor to vendor, especially in the BI market, right? Everybody claims that they do self-service analytics on Hadoop, right? So I think the real challenge is to go back and say, well, look, how long does it take you to actually get to Insight? Mm. Um, if you're a business end user, you're probably really frustrated, especially if you are understanding and have been using these traditional business analytics tools for years because they haven't really changed that much in the last 20 years, right? So your ability to get to Insight quickly and to figure out which questions to ask quickly has been frustrating uh, historically for a very long time. So we really kind of focus on enabling that insight and we talk about how our customers are seeing some very significant things that they didn't expect to see when they started going down the road with Plat4, right? So the great thing about Hadoop and having a schema on read kind of approach is that you can put all your data in there, it doesn't matter how it's structured, and solutions like Plat4 can help you find insight and discover things you didn't even know about your business. So we have you know, amazing great stories that I tell all the time around how people are getting to the bottom of what is preventing them from really adopting more customers around specific use cases. And they're discovering things like, hey, you know, if I'm operating a web conferencing service, um, it looks like it's actually poor audio quality that's driving most of my customers um, to tear out their hair. And I didn't even know that before because I didn't have the data around the poor audio quality to begin with. So being able to sort of get to that insight quickly, and then once you discover that, you know which direction you want to go to, and kind of migrate through all the data in a Hadoop environment very quickly, that's a new thing. And a sort of traditional BI approach is only going to treat Hadoop as a bolt-on which means that that ability to get to insight very quickly isn't really changing from where it was 20 years ago. Well, I think you hit on two important things. One, time to insight, it's critical. Right. And two, kind of that, that lack of a better term, self-service capability where you can, enable, you can empower a business user to go ahead and do this without having exactly. to go through the, you know, the, the nine, 12 month cycle with their IT department and building out the data warehouse and modeling the data, that kind of thing. That, that exactly. is what's, I think, frustrating a lot of users and moving, um, creating a lot of interest in what's happening in the Hadoop ecosystem, what Plat4 is doing and others. So, um, so we got to wrap up. One last, uh, I guess, one last question would be, you know, what's next on the agenda for the uh, Hortonworks and Plat4 mm -hmm. relationship looking sure. forward over the next year? How do you see this kind of evolving? So I think we both see a lot of uh, tremendous potential around Spark as an enabling technology, and we're using it in different mm -hmm. ways, right? I think I'll, I'll let um, Jim speak to you know what Spark does in terms of enabling ingest and other sorts of technologies around Hadoop. What we're doing with Spark is we're leveraging it to enable much more complex transformation work, and we're enabling a whole uh, exposed interface called platform, platform extensions, which allows end users to create very cu uh, customized uh, transformations for very complex data sets, and also do things like machine learning and graph uh, applications, which have traditionally been the province of predictive analytics sorts of solutions. So Spark is a great enabling technology for us, and we're actually building that technology into our product. Uh, we've been doing it for the last couple of releases, and we should see full formation around the part of this year. And you know, from us, from a relationship point of view, thank you for going right at technology because yeah, there's a go-to-market and we're going to figure out how we go out and sell and talk yeah. to customers. We're great at that, right? We both understand data, we understand schema, we, we understand the, the time to insight. That's why I think people are choosing companies like Platform and like ourselves because we we're nimble, we get it. We, we get this new world. That's all great. Um, you know, our partnerships are led by engineering relationships. That's what we do at Hortonworks. Um, you know, we're going to work with our partners to make sure that Spark is a key piece of what's going to happen in Platform. yet still Spark is going to work on Yarn so that I can deliver on the promise of a data lake where I have all my data and access it multiple different ways, no matter what the engine needs to be, because again, people are going to use Hive at the same time on that data as well. So you know, our role is to make sure that all these things do work together and then have these deep partnerships be it platform or any one of our other partners that you talk to, any one of them, it's, a, it's an engineering relationship as well. And so I think it's a unique approach to partnerships, um, you know, where, where our breadth is, is wide as well. Uh, you know, we, we, 
we take pride in making sure that the tech is going to work together. It's going to be simple, and it's going to really fuel the use cases that their customers are going to be, because ultimately we're a platform. Ultimately we're a platform, and for us to, to foster adoption of where we want to be, Jeff, that's what's critical for us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, you know, rinse and repeat for every one of our partners, and, and this is a great one because they're right, right there in the middle of the space with us. Well, some interesting, interesting things happening. So guys, Jim from Hortonworks, Rob Rosen for Platform Guys, thanks awesome. for joining us on theCUBE, appreciate Thank it. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will be right back after this short break.